Ah, the nation's capital, home of voluminous red tape, rabid anti-red sentiment, the popular Washington Redskins, and beautiful women whose typing skills are sometimes questioned. But for this game, it was figures that counted, and the girls would need a high math aptitude and pocket calculators to keep track of the score. Of course, they'd also need some pockets for the calculators. Defense was not the order of the day, and both Redskins and Eagles defenses showed some thin spots that needed patching up. Naturally, Coach Jack Pardee's troops were flying high after their opening day upset of the New England Patriots. And it looks like quarterback Joe Theismann is ready to keep Billy Kilmer spectating from the sidelines. He knew the Eagles had some weaknesses in the secondary, so he was buckling down for a big day. Meanwhile, the Philly Birds also had room for optimism. They had almost upset the Rams on opening day, and Coach Dick Vermeil's defense was tougher than ever up front. And in the middle, where Captain Bill Berge is the crazy glue that binds an improving linebacker core into a solid, respected unit. Both teams had been picked by various sources to finish second to the Cowboys in the NFC East. This will be the first of their 1978 showdowns as the Washington Redskins meet the Philadelphia Eagles in the NFL Game of the Week. On the opening series of plays, Joe Theismann kept bumping into Bill Berge, who dropped him twice for 18 yards and losses, forcing a punt. Striking while the iron was hot, Eagle signal caller Ron Jaworski led a quick but profitable drive. On the third play of the possession, number 31, Wilbert Montgomery shocked the Redskin stoppers by slashing for 34 yards in a quick Philadelphia lead. Seen from another angle, it looks as though the score came on a combination of sloppy tackling by Washington and good balance and speed by Montgomery. At any rate, the Eagles were off and running, and it seemed so easy that their optimism ballooned. But Montgomery might have been wise to temper his mate's enthusiasm with the warning, after me, the deluge. Nick Mickemeyer's kick was taken by first-year man Tony Green, number 34, and he blazed for a 39-yard return to prove that Jack Pardee has kept the Washington special teams up to the same level of excellence as his predecessor and mentor, George Allen. Joe Theismann then proceeded to move the Redskins downfield with short but sure passes to his running backs, John Riggins, number 44, and Mike Thomas, number 22. Only once in the 11-play drive did this strategy break down due to unforeseen difficulties. The setback was momentary, and on the next play, Theismann rolled right and kept right on rolling to tie the score at seven. A replay shows that Theismann was sincere in his efforts to locate a receiver. But had he not scored himself, he still would have been safe at second by a mile. Reluctant to relinquish their share of the tie, the Redskins surrounded the Philadelphia wagon train, bent on hammering it into the turf. Although the Eagles moved the ball for 12 plays on this drive, the best they could manage was a 32-yard field goal by Mickemeyer, which gave them a short-lived 10-7 lead.
Again, the Washington special teams proved that they were just that. And again, it was Tony Green, this time on a 41-yard return. Iceman then unloaded a quick out to Danny Bugs, who used his magic elf shoes to scamper down the sideline for a gain of 20 yards. But then two passes into the end zone and a short field goal attempt all missed, and it looked like the eagle was flying high. However, on the next series, Ron Jaworski got caught for a 14-yard loss, which resulted in the Eagles having to punt. As if the sack wasn't bad enough, the very next play after the punt was even worse. Enjoying perhaps his best protection of the afternoon, Weissman stepped back into a perfect pocket and zipped an equally perfect pass to streaking tight end Gene Fugit. The play covered 49 yards and put Washington on top 14 to 10. Now it was time for Redskin Rooters to jiggle and giggle for their team and pluck the Eagles' pin feathers and stuck them in their own war bonnets. For Gene Fugit, a seventh-year man from Amherst, and Joe Theismann, the afternoon was shiny brass, which through the magic of their alchemy would soon turn to gold. Once again, Jaworski found himself in trouble as number 72, Dyron Talbert, looped around and sacked him like a bag of potatoes. The only movement the Eagles could generate was short and negligible. But they made up for it on defense when number 65, Charlie Johnson, dumped Mike Thomas for a loss. Then, like birds attacking a public monument, all the Eagles homed in on John Riggins. Wherever he went, he was inundated in green and white, sometimes to the point of almost disappearing from the game. With their lead established and the half nearing an end, the Redskins wanted to stick to their ground game. Unfortunately, it was Riggins who received the sticky. But buoyed by the encouragement of his teammates, Riggins eventually battered his way to 50 yards on 10 carries in the first two periods. A nine-yard gain just prior to halftime gave the Redskins the room they wanted to go for one more score. Opening up the airways again, Theismann hit number 86, John McDaniel. Then from the 19-yard line, Theismann drilled a perfect fire arrow to none other than Gene Fugit, and Washington's lead soared skyward 21 to 10. A repeat shows a good play fake by Theismann, a good block by guard Ron Saul, number 64, and a pigskin through a needle's eye to Fugit. The Eagles now had their work cut out for them. Of the last 24 points scored, 21 belonged to Washington, and events at the start of the second half could well decide the final outcome early. The Redskins' late first half score had given Washington an 11-point lead and made the Eagles' task that much more difficult. They were facing a veteran team that knows how to protect a lead. 
one that despite its age rarely loses a game in the second half when they are supposed to be too tired to even stand up. One minute, 17 seconds into the second half, the Eagles' job got even tougher. Rookie Tony Green from the University of Florida raced 80 yards to bump the Redskin lead to 28 to 10 as the Washington special teams continued to sparkle. The Redskins' return yardage now read 178 yards in just over one half of the game. But for the Eagles, special teams' play has been a disaster. On opening day, the Rams blocked a punt that turned out to be their only touchdown as they beat Philadelphia 16 to 14. Now, one week later, they had been burned by a long return that threatened to turn the game into a rout, although the play had not begun well for the Redskins. Green was forced into retreat and mishandled Rick Engel's punt, but Engel's had outkicked the coverage, allowing Green time to regroup. One slip tackle, and he was gone. Long kick returns frequently result from just such situations. A fumble or slip by the return man often throws the timing of the coverage man out of sync, and the Eagles were now very much out of kilter, trailing by 18 points early in the second half. The Eagles would have to open up, something that Jaworski has been itching to do anyway. In the Eagles opener, Jaworski had thrown only 17 passes, and Philadelphia fans had second-guessed the team's conservative play. Against the Redskins, the Polish rifle would fire 25 times in the second half alone, but early shots failed to bag much yardage. On Washington's next possession, the lead almost got even larger, but Frank Grant could not handle Feisman's stinger. Grant might well have gone 76 yards, for he was behind the Eagles' deep defense. Given a new life, the Philadelphia defense began to live up to its reputation as a bunch of hungry hitters. Throughout the remainder of the second half, the Eagle 3-4 defense swarmed. If the Eagle offense could match their performance, there was still plenty of time to climb back into the game. In the fourth quarter, the Eagles would have possession six different times as Washington could not put its offense back together. Around the middle of the third quarter, the Eagle offense finally found something and someone that would work. The something was short passes to beat the Redskin Blitz. Looking at the last play from ground level reveals a number 55, Chris Hamburger, at an open lane to Jaworski, but could not get there in time. The someone was number 31, Wilbert Montgomery, who caught four passes for 35 yards of a 53-yard eagle drive. From the 10-yard line, Jaworski made an excellent play fake to Mike Hogan and found Montgomery again. The circle pattern offense worked perfectly, and if we look at Montgomery's touchdown from the end zone, we can see that Jaworski's play fake worked perfectly, too. Number 32 middle linebacker Mike Curtis moved into the line and was not available to cover the back coming out of the backfield. The Eagles had cut the lead to 12, but missed the extra point. Four plays into the fourth quarter, the defense missed an entire play as Danny Bugs got behind the Philadelphia secondary, and the lead was up to 19 points. Bugs had gotten wide open for Theismann's third touchdown pass of the day, thanks to a trick play. Offensive coordinator Joe Walton has promised to spring a fancy player to every game. Against the Eagles, it was a perfectly executed flea flicker. Theismann to Riggins, to Theismann to Bugs. Redskins 35, Eagles 16. Only with a razzle-dazzling play had Washington been able to dent the defense thrown up by Philadelphia. But the Eagle defense's best moments still lay ahead. With just under a quarter to go, Philadelphia needed a quick score to have any hope at all. 
And when Jaworski hit Ken Payne for 50 yards, they were poised to do just that. From the eight, Montgomery marched into the end zone. The Eagles trail by 12 again. Looking at Montgomery's third touchdown a second time reveals why he is the key man in the Eagles' hope for running resurgence as he made a quick and decisive cutback and flew into the end zone. Still ahead by 12, there was little panic on the Redskins' side. Veteran teams simply don't blow 19-point leads in the fourth quarter. But the Redskin offense that had been free of turnovers till now suddenly fell apart. Frank LaMaster recovered Mike Thomas' fumble in midair and the Eagles were on the Redskin 23. Two plays later, Montgomery was in the end zone again and Philadelphia thought the lead was down to five. But field judge Charlie Musser made no touchdown signal, for on the play, the Eagles were detected holding. Jaworski was somewhat upset, and two plays later, really sick when he thought he saw Curtis, number 32, take himself out of the middle zone by moving left. But the 14-year veteran came back to the right and stole Jaworski's pass. But if the Redskins thought the Eagles were finished, they underestimated the desire of Dick Vermeil's team. On the Redskins' next series, Theismann surprisingly was throwing on first down. His pass was tipped, defensive end Carl Hairston intercepted, and the Eagles were in business again, this time on the Redskins' 16-yard line. The Redskins were very uncharacteristically trying to give the game away. And if they were going to be so generous about it, the Eagles were glad to oblige them. But after the turnover, the Eagles suffered through an anxious moment. Two plays after the turnover, Jaworski was down with a leg injury. But one of the strengths Philadelphia discovered in the preseason was an excellent backup quarterback, John Walton, who successfully finished off the Eagle drive. Montgomery's fourth touchdown of the day tied an Eagle record that he now shares with Tommy McDonald, Ben Hawkins, and Clarence Peaks, and brought the Eagles to within five points of the Redskins. But with four minutes to go, Washington had only to grind out a few first downs, and their fourth quarter mistakes would be forgotten. Well, folks, believe it or not, Washington not only couldn't run out the clock, they turned the ball over for a third straight time. The Eagles failed to cash in on the break, however, but a hustling play by the Philadelphia special teams left Washington in the poorest of field position. Another turnover now, and the Redskins would really be in trouble. The pressure now sat squarely on the Redskin offense. Even if they didn't turn the ball over on a turnover, if they couldn't punch out some yardage, they would be punting from their own end zone. But when they had to do it, they did, as the Redskin offense parted the tough Eagle defense to get some operating room. Ultimately, Washington had to punt, but it was from better field position, and with 51 seconds to go, the Eagles had 51 yards to go to win the game. Jaworski now recovered from his injury, got 16 yards on two pass completions and with one second left, called the all receivers into the end zone, I'll throw it high play, hoping for a miracle. Jaworski's pass was overthrown, but the Eagles did get a mini miracle. On the play, the Redskins were offside, and since the game cannot end with a penalty called against the defense, the Eagles would get one more shot from 30 yards out. 
This time, Jaworski could not go long. Cleveland Franklin dropped his last chance shorter pass, and Washington had held on to win 35 to 30. The 88th renewal of the Philadelphia-Washington rivalry had been a beaut. After some very, very anxious moments, the Redskins now stand 2-0 and once again are a force to be reckoned with in the race toward the postseason playoffs.